Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. As I've discussed in some of my previous videos, the reptile market is always going through cycles. Sometimes reptiles are super popular and they're selling like hotcakes. Sometimes they're not as popular and it's much harder to sell them. And uh, what I've noticed lately, you know, as I've discussed previously, we're probably in a stage right now for the last year where the market's been kind of cooling off a bit. The market was really red hot at the start of the COVID pandemic because everyone had time and money. But now a few years later, people have neither. So the enthusiasm in the market for reptiles has dried up somewhat. And so I've seen a lot of people on social media, especially Facebook, bitching and complaining about this, about how rough they have it and how it's not fair and you know other things like that. So today I just wanted to give a little bit of perspective of how I think about this. Um, so if you're fed up with the reptile market lately, hopefully this video should have some insight for you. Also, if you're thinking about getting into the reptile market either as a seller or a buyer, it's really important that you stay tuned to what I'm gonna say here. So the first thing, first point I wanna make is that reptiles are not an investment for money. And if you got into reptiles solely or primarily to make money, you're just gonna get uh, hurt. You know, you're not gonna be successful. Because uh, reptiles is not a traditional investment like stocks or real estate or something like that. Um, you're very unlikely to make money in reptiles. You know, as they say, the best way to make a small fortune breeding reptiles is to start with a large fortune. And I would say that the vast minority, only a very, very small amount of people who set out to breed reptiles ever even make their money back, let alone make some kind of profit. So you can't be into reptiles for the money. That's the first really important point. The second important point is that there's more to being a reptile breeder than breeding reptiles. Okay, just having the reptiles isn't enough. You have to master the customer service aspect. You have to convince somebody to give you their hard earned cash for your reptile. Often someone that you've never met in person and it's just through email and maybe a phone call. So how are you gonna do this? Well, I'm actually planning a series of videos in the near future for different things, different aspects of reptile marketing and different important things to master if you ever want to be successful dealing with reptiles. But for today's video, I just thought I would focus on the current situation of people, you know, feeling sorry for themselves, for lack of a better word, because their reptiles aren't selling. Or people that are getting out of reptiles because the market cooled off now and they've decided it's just not worth the effort, you know. But if you're in reptiles for the right reason, you're not just in it to sell and to make money, you're in it because you love the reptiles. And if you have to hold on to some of your babies, you know, for six months or a year, so be it, you know. Personally, I always have babies that are still available a year after they're born. Typically, I try to sell all my babies within a year, you know, so by the time that the next year's babies arrive, I've sold most of the previous year's babies. I actually still have about four or five Surinams from 2022. And I think I have a morph bow as well. So yeah, I still have animals that are now about a year and a half old. And you know, it's fine, you know, I, I'll sell them eventually. Sometimes I enjoy just watching them grow. And uh, you know, I still have some animals also from 2023. Pretty soon the 2024 babies are going to be born. So I'll have animals from, potentially from three years worth of breedings available at the same time. So you just have to deal with that and you have to understand that it's your responsibility to care for the animals until they sell, no matter how long that might be. And right now we're still in a really bad position financially. You hear a lot on the news, oh, inflation's getting better, the economy's doing great. Well, you know, the stock market might be doing great, but in general, people just don't have money to spend because everything is so damn expensive. It's just unbelievable how crazy expensive everything is these days. It's painful to go shopping. And even though they claim that the rate of inflation is down, you know, of course, the inflation's baked in. The price of pretty much everything has gone up by 20 to 25% over the last three years. That's not going away. You know, it's still going up, just not quite at the same rate, but it's still going up. 
and things that used to be cheap or you can't even afford anymore. I mean, you can't even go to McDonald's for a meal for less than like 20 bucks. It's crazy. You know, one thing that really gets me is the power bills, the inner electricity bills. I was, re I got my power bill yesterday looking at it. They've raised the rate again every single month. The cost per kilowatt hour PG&E in California is charging is going up. I'm now paying 50 cents a kilowatt hour. It's absolutely insane. You know, when I uh, moved into this house about 10 years ago, I was paying 12 cents a kilowatt hour. You know, so my power bill for one month is almost $700. It's, it's just insane. Um, so, you know, if people can't afford their power bill, they don't have money for snakes. This is why it's getting harder to sell snakes because people just don't have the money. And snakes are a luxury item. People need to pay their rent, they need to buy food, they need to pay their power bill and their car payment. They don't need to buy snakes. So this is not something that they're gonna buy if they just don't have the money. And you have to understand that. I've noticed on social media lately, more breeders are complaining about the tire kickers, the people that ask the questions and they take up your time and energy, but they just don't buy your snakes. And these tire kicker types, you're always gonna have to deal with them. So I would say right now, you have to deal with more of them just because there's not as many people buying because they don't have the money and there's a larger supply of reptiles. But I would say right now, for everyone who buys a boa from me, I probably have to deal with three or four tire kickers. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's answering questions, sending emails, it takes away a lot of my time. I could be doing something else. But this is what you have to go through in order to get that one out of four who buys a boa. You have to treat everybody equally and you know, give them all the benefit of the doubt and you know, give them your time and energy. You know, people will ask for pictures and I've known, I know a lot of people complain about how many pictures people ask for. But it's really not that hard to take more pictures. You just take out your cell phone, snap a picture, email it to them. I, I saw a Facebook post the other day where someone was bitching about, oh, you know, this person asked for more pictures and it was such a pain in the ass and all these other people got on and went on about how miserable they are and about, you know, how they wanted to feel sorry for themselves. No, this is just send the picture, okay? It's just not that hard. I mean, come on, man. You know, send the picture, work with the person. A lot of times if you have a tire kicker that doesn't buy, it's because you won't work with them. You know, if I know most people don't want to do payment plans or anything like that, but work with the person. Maybe the person just needs a little bit more time to set up the enclosure for the reptile. Or maybe the person thinks that they want a boa, but they don't really understand which type. Just put a little bit more time in, give the customer service, and you're much more likely to end up selling a reptile that way. You know, rather than feeling sorry for yourself about how bad you have it, because no one's buying your reptiles. Another common theme of the social media posts is people taking it really personally when someone lowballs them on an offer for a reptile. You know, maybe you have a reptile up or snake up for 500 bucks, someone offers you 150 bucks, something like that. That's their problem. You know, those types of people, I just say, no thank you, and move on. I, you know, don't take it personally if someone does that. You know, they're either someone that doesn't understand the reptile market or somebody that doesn't really have any intention of buying, of buying and just you know, figures they'll throw out this crazy, ridiculous lowball offer. But you don't have to waste your time on these types of people. There's other people who understand the reptile market and they're not gonna do that if they really want your particular boa or other reptile. And you know, when you think about it, if you're outside of the reptile market, some of the prices might seem kind of crazy. I mean, paying $1,000 for a snake is, uh, for someone who doesn't like snakes, seems a little bit crazy. So they don't understand the value of these animals, you know, or the investment potential as far as the return from breeding or from just enjoying the animal, or how much money it takes to produce these animals, and they're going to throw the lowball offer out to you. That's just something you have to deal with. Don't take anything that a buyer says personally if they give you some kind of negative comment. I know it's hard. I, you know, people have, I've had experienced that from time to time and I've had to, you know, try not to let my ego get bruised, but there's just people out there like that. And, um, you know, for every one of these people, there's probably a dozen people that give you really positive comments. So try to focus on those types of people. And then lastly, what you don't want to do, which I've made a whole video about, you don't want to devalue your reptiles. 
just because the market's cooling off you don't want to panic if you're one of these types that thinks i need to get out immediately you don't want to take a thousand dollar stake and now put a hundred dollar price tag on that because you're losing money it's going to cost you a lot more than a hundred dollars to produce that animal and you're kind of screwing over everyone else that's working with these animals by devaluing them like this and in fact if someone buys their animals they're likely or there's a pretty good chance that they'll turn around and flip them and sell them at the market value and just take a quick profit from them or the other issue is that if, they, if there's a thousand dollar snake for the hundred dollar price tag someone might think that there's something wrong with it and they're not going to want to buy it in the first place so don't devalue your animals you know it's one thing to mark it from a thousand down to 900 or 800 but you don't want to mark it down to a tenth of the actual market value that's just not uh, uh, an effective strategy so if you're feeling bad about your reptile sales lately remember the reptile market is cyclical in another few years chances are pretty good it's going to come back and snakes are going to be selling for higher prices again probably higher than they were even at the peak a few years ago and the other thing to consider is if you're a buyer right now is a great time to be buying reptiles because they're quite a bit less expensive and more available than they were a few years ago so if you want to set up a breeding group or you know several breeding groups of different types of animals now is your time to get some really nice animals at a really decent price and the opportunity isn't going to last forever so don't miss the ship and get on that ship and buy those animals to get your breeding group going so i hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable as always shoot me any questions or comments you might have thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.